Avast, ye, and welcome to the Gay Pirate Podcast, where two queer IRL pirates talk about our flag means death one episode at a time. I'm Lark Malachi Gray, and I have one gun and one knife, just like everyone else. I am Jesse Blount, and if you're not going to be Jim anymore, can I be Jim? (laughs) Yes, and... If you like this show, please rate and review us on iTunes. Also, don't forget that you can celebrate Hot Pirate Summer with us. Uh, join our Patreon to, wa- Patreon to watch Hook with us later this month and to watch Our Flag Means Death with us every week on Tuesdays and Fridays, um, except not the week that this comes out because we're out of town and otherwise busy. Uh, <laughs> Also, we post cute memes and other fun things on our social media, and we have really great Our Flag Means Death inspired merch in our shop. The links to all of those things are in the show notes. Also, we do a gender and sexuality advice episode every year for Pride, which goes up on the Gaily Prophet and Escape from Reality feeds next Tuesday, June 21st. And we release a really fun bonus episode about the movie our, uh, about the movie Birds of Prey on those feeds last Tuesday, so you should check those out. This is a fully spoiled podcast. And with that, we will enter our first segment. (laughs) (laughs) Talk it through as a crew where we talk about everything that doesn't go anywhere else. All right, I will start since you just, I think, didn't take a breath the entire time you were saying that thing. (laughs) Um, We start off with this deeply uncomfortable, small coast, coast, coastline wedding between Steed and Mary. And I kind of feel bad because literally 20 minutes later, we have Mary talk about how much she fucking hates the ocean. Mm-hmm. So clearly whoever designed this wedding was just like, whatever the fuck, we're going to do it. It's going to be cute. Y'all don't need to contribute anything to what's going on. And it's just like, not a great start to this marriage. I mean, yeah, it, it nothing about the start of their marriage is good. No, not in the slightest. Um. I want to start sort of outside of the episode and just say that something that I really appreciate about this show is that they're not, um, the episodes aren't specific lengths. Like they're as long as they need to be to get across the storyline that they're writing. And I know, you know, that's not possible anywhere where you have like a schedule, like on cable TV or whatever, but the freedom that I think it gives them to be able to develop things as much or as little as necessary is really nice. How did I literally not notice that until you said that? Because I was like sitting there, I'm like, why is this episode like 45 minutes long? (laughs) 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 Or however long it is. I'm like, I still, I was like watching it. I'm like, I still have 20 minutes left. So much has happened. Yeah, this one's like 35 minutes and the last one was 26 minutes. Um, and it just, you know, varies throughout the whole season They they hover around half an hour, but like 10 additional minutes of plot is a lot in TV time. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, there's a lot crammed into this episode. So yeah, there really is. Mm -hmm. (laughs) The way that Izzy says Edward focus is like i felt that deep (laughs) in my soul (laughs) and i'm just like how dare you izzy hands but it's also like actually yeah i guess this is important (laughs) yeah yeah no same it's uh very (laughs) very relatable to i think all of us with adhd out here in the world I am fucking focusing. There's a toy boat. What are you talking about? <laughs> Do you see all the cool shit in this cabinet right now, Izzy? Little <laughs> ceramic figurines on a boat. Do you understand how magical and impractical this shit is? Truly. And I think it's so funny because um, one of the points that I have is that Blackbeard is like, I mean, he's being nice judgmental, but still being judgmental about everything that Steed has around. And I was like, Sir, like we all saw your captain's quarters in the last episode. Like, why is having a bunch of mummies around more reasonable than having like figurines and a model of your ship? He has to maintain that persona of Blackbeard. So, uh, yeah, go for it. Oh, Ed's face when Steed asks if he works for Blackbeard. <laughs> 
which is the like it's first it's like are you fucking kidding me right now and then it's just that that immediate moment of being like oh i don't have to tell you that i'm blackbeard because you didn't automatically guess that from yeah. context clues <laughs> <laughs> i know it's so good um my next thing is so when they're all like fixing up the boat lucius is just standing there like vaguely hammering on the deck rail, like, like not doing anything not even looking at what he's doing <laughs> i love it so much yeah it is it is actually very funny because it's like yeah it's like only a few people are doing actual work and no one knows how to do the work it's yeah. just like you know, you, you know, uh, if you weren't coasting by on sitcom magic, Izzy would be right about what's happening <laughs> around you. Yep. So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my next point is that, you know, how's I'm saying is, you know, Jim, Jim gets some results uh, threatening Frenchie and the rest of the crew with a knife about their name and pronouns and I'm just like you know <laughs> people wanna uh you know bring that energy into their into your own lives just saying yeah it's a <laughs> effective tactic <laughs> um in that scene I I mean, we're like learning so much about Izzy, obviously, in this episode and, you know, how seriously he takes himself. And I think that we get like, it's just such a beautiful example of it when he comes in and he's like, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you sitting around eating? Like, why are you not taking this seriously? And then storms off expecting that they're going to be like, shit, I got in trouble. I'm going to start working. And instead they're just like, anyway, and like get back <laughs> to their conversation. <laughs> The like anyway for P is just so perfect. Yeah. They're just like, uh, hello, you're just the substitute teacher. You're not our real teacher. <laughs> yes, I could have as like fire a spit water out of my <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> Yeah. Um I never brought this up earlier in an episode, but I'm sort of rabid about it but during the close swap is when we see blackbeard obtain the like black neckerchief that he therefore never gives back to steed even when he is a kraken and i'm just like it's like okay it's like all the tears just all of the tears and i'm also like they had to be cute they're in love <laughs> <I know. sighs> yeah um I want to point out the foreshadowing, well, it's not, I guess it's foreshadowing, but also just uh, when they're drinking, they're going to go down with the ship. Ed is like, I always thought I'd have a cooler death, like being eaten by a tiger. And then Ed, or Steed is like filing that away for he totally later. Is. <laughs> I'm going to fake my own death by being eaten. It's not a tiger. It's like a jaguar. I don't know what it is. A jungle cat. Yeah. Yeah. Which is pretty funny. Um, okay. So this fucking show. I love when you see Lucius, like they're all below deck and like Izzy is like, we have a plan. We're fucking going to die. And then Lucius comes back from counting back an hour and 45 minutes, which is already 47 like minutes. Hundred, an hour and 47 minutes. And he's like doing like a, a tense like countdown, which I feel like you mainly see in like really intense like crime drama movies as a fucking bomb or some shit. And it's just, it just, just rat. You could just see Steed's anxiety wretched. <laughs> and I don't know why him coming and doing the countdown is like so perfect and funny, but it is. Yeah, no, it's incredible. And Steve doesn't even know why he's counting. Like, he was still passed out when that happened, but it's so clear. Like, there's such urgency related to it. It's great. Also, Lucius doesn't know why he's counting. He does not know why he's counting. 
Um, I love that he did it backwards. <laughs> like if someone was like count backwards from an hour and 47 minutes, I would 100% count forwards for an hour and 47 minutes. <laughs> but Lucius is just like, no, that's what you said. That's what I have to do. Yeah. Um, this is actually my last thing here. Who do you think delivered them their like breakfast service to the crow's nest? Um, that's a good question. Probably Roach. I mean, he definitely put it together. Yeah. Okay. No, actually, like... that makes sense because I feel like you know Roach does his own thing most of the time but also he is like very passionate about cooking and like about um plating you know uh so I feel like he wouldn't trust anyone else to carry that up to the crow's nest and make it presentable and especially if Steve was like oh I really want to impress Blackbeard with like the spread and Roach would be like oh fuck yes (laughs) yeah um I actually just have I have one more thing too, in which um, the sh- uh, I and I didn't catch this because I just happened to hit pause. But there's the scene when Ed is drunk on Steve's couch wearing his like fancy pants. Behind the couch, you can see the plant that Steve stole in the first episode, and it's still it looks kind of sad, still. And I'm like, has Ed been the one watering this fucking plant? Because <laughs> it looks beautiful and lush. What is it like five episodes later yeah. or whatever? And I'm like. So I love that. I, mean, I don't know. I'm just like, this is my new head cannon that Ed is the one who's been watering that fucking plant. <laughs> yeah, because it really takes one time of watering a fern for it to bounce back. So I'm saying yes. Okay. I All love right. that. <laughs> oh, okay. Welcome to a crew of imbeciles where we talk about character development. Can we start with Blackbeard? We sure can. He is also in my top space. Um, cool. Yeah. Um, I want to start. Okay, so I feel like this episode really gives us like very interesting character establishment because obviously he's like really like a- amiable. He's very friendly. He's very like what the fuck is my crew being so intense about, you know? Mm -hmm. And like, in a lot of ways, we see him being like pretty soft and like we continue seeing him be very soft. But also like, we get very clearly that he is also like utterly ruthless because when he says, oh, they die quite dramatically, don't they, Spaniards? A lot of blubbering for their God. And then also as he's like, we lost a bunch of men when we fought those Spaniards and Blackbeard's like, um, that's their job, they're pirates. You're like, oh, that's fucking cold, dude. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is a very uh, interesting duality to his personality, which is, and especially interesting because we sort of we sort of get when like when Steed and Ed meet and Steed is like, well, do you work for Blackbeard? And he's like, oh, I, I guess I do. And sort of this and the show kind of continues a sort of like. There's a like the soft Ed side and there is the like ruthless. You know, the ruthless Blackbeard, like right. dread, dread pirate Blackbeard side of him, you know? Yeah. Um, and. Which, I mean, I think we, we expect as someone who's like fucking Blackbeard, but it is just, it's just so fascinating to get kind of like, you know, up until this point, we've had these sort of like shadowy meetings and we're like, oh man, we've seen Izzy, this dude must be fucking tough. And then it's just like, look at the clouds, Izzy. <laughs> Don't they look like hot dogs? And you're just like, what? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and for a second there, I was like, maybe, maybe it is sort of like steed like brings out this side of him in the way that sort of like a friendly golden retriever can befriend a you know shitty cat that Mm. you know will like bite any human but is like in love with this dog i had one of those when i was growing up um 
but we actually see that before when you know he's just like hey guys you know <laughs> like I know he's supposed to have cat energy but I do feel like Ed comes in with like really friendly dog energy <laughs> he's just like don't call me sir like how's everybody doing look at you you're all so grubby just like so like he you know he maybe he's more of like a pit bull than a golden retriever in that he looks scary but actually he's just like the wiggliest dog but he does have a lot of dog energy going on here no I think you're right and yeah and especially when it's like even that the way he interacts with the crew like we we've already brought up Izzy having like really mean substitute teacher energy when he calls them the crew to call them hostages when they're like eating lunch he just says you don't get to eat when you've been invaded. Yeah, right, right, right. And and Ed is like, oh, you know, like don't treat our guests like that, you know. And it's just like very acting, very like also very amicable, um, you know, about the crew and all of their rope <laughs> aesthetic <laughs> <laughs> and his excitement over the bird guy. <laughs> Which, like, the fact that. Izzy and Fang and Ivan are pretending that they aren't excited about Carl is like really speaks to their ability to like hold back their emotions because literally everyone is like what what the fuck like they have a bird guy like they're you can't convince me that they're not internally stoked about Carl I mean I mean uh I mean we have uh Fang being canonically at least a dog person potentially animal person so. yeah um yeah. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> I feel like my top notes for Ed is just like besides just being a like, I don't know, tender summer child, it's also like, oh, these are like the worst fire sign ADHD impulses, <laughs> I think. <laughs> um when like and like looking at him just like, oh. Wait, say so more about that. Oh, I guess, I mean, so obviously I brought up a lot in my uh, intro that like a, a lot of recognizing a lot of sort of like ADHD stuff that I do and like recognizing it in in Ed, but also sort of like, I'm like, you sort of have Sagittarius energy or like in general fire sign. I think Leo, but like, um, just because of his sort of like maybe more the black peer persona than maybe ed himself yeah uh actually we'll get to him but we do get both mary and steed's birthday on the tombstones so that so that's i think the real steed bonnet's real birthday and i oh. also in general like don't care as much about things like that as i do about the vibe of the characters yeah. Uh, anyway, I do agree with you though about Ed being a fire sign, probably Sagittarius. So. Yeah, but like he, there's no way that anyone who like, like there's no way that he doesn't have like big water placements also in his mm -hmm. in his chart. So. Yeah. I feel that feels right thematically as a pirate. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Water is like the squishiest of the sign options. I feel like you probably want mostly like fire signs in your in your pirates. Uh like to be to be a pirate. Um yeah, actually I guess we've sort of covered the rest of my stuff is really about his like just dissatisfaction with what his life has become how this like you know adventure tm life has somehow become incredibly predictable yeah yes <laughs> i was like do i have anything to add to that and i guess i actually don't yeah cool. it's like because like if even your dream job could get tedious and terrible especially if maybe you're over the sort of tough wrathful persona that you have to bring to the role you know yeah Sometimes you just have to start another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> oh. 
Who do you want to talk about next? Um, I have actually Izzy next. Cool, let's do it. Uh, and since I was on this vein, uh, I don't know how you feel about this, but I think I think Izzy has some Earth signs, like Capricorn or Virgo, and maybe it's just kind of the 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 place that he holds, like compared to Izzy. I mean, compared sorry, compared to Ed, where like he has to be the like okay but details like being in reality like concrete like we're we're going to die i do not care about this fucking toy boat <laughs> yeah yeah i can definitely see izzy being a capricorn that makes a lot of sense to me yeah also i feel like izzy also has i feel like in my brain izzy has like terrier or like miniature schnauzer energy in the way that before they were like lap dogs those were dogs that you that would like hunt like rats and rabbits and shit like that like little vicious dogs yeah that, like for hunting vermin and i'm like that just that just feels like izzy even though i'll have to dig it up someone tweeted the heights of like i think everyone on cast and like izzy is not much shorter than ed or steve but somehow he's, con o'neill he's like he's think, a, there's a, that when that scene when ed and izzy are talking there's like a head height difference i feel like but also i don't know ed could be wearing heels who knows yeah i just feel like he just has and i think the show plays up on it sort of like angry short dude energy yeah <laughs> um and I, I mean i don't think my actor is like that short in real life no i've seen know. some really funny memes where people are like con o'neill in real life con o'neill and like fan art and it's just <laughs> yes. like this dramatic <laughs> exactly. <type difference>. um, <laughs> uh, which he also the actor has embraced like i've seen so many tweets from him about like how short he is and like how short is he is <laughs> i just love like he's just like yeah whatever like Give me all the fandom. I accept it. It's canon now. I mean, it's for the actor probably pretty great to like have all of a sudden all of these like r- random millennial queers being like, I'm fucking obsessed with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta be super nice. So, uh... cool. So I know I was trying to like keep the astrology talk to like one thing per episode. However, I want to talk about Frenchie and why I think that Frenchie is an Aquarius. I'm here for this. I mean, I feel like I already uh, busted that wide open where I'm like, I need to talk about how <laughs> 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 Izzy and Ed are a right, fire slash earth sign relationship. But so, yes, let's talk about my dear sweet Frenchie. <laughs> yeah. So I think I said in the first episode that he reminds me of Luna Lovegood a lot. Yeah um obviously this is a prime example this like actually it's science (laughs) um and I I guess I'll say for folks who are listening who like don't have access to the show but just love us and are listening anyway Frenchie says uh that it's science that women are bad luck on ships he says women have crystals in their bodies and the crystals attract demons and the demons attract misfortune um and that is just like pure Aquarius energy I feel like um and I'll talk more obviously in the next episode about Frenchie um because in this episode we get a lot of like goofy Frenchie like he fucking nails his sleeved (laughs) 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 um you know he's delivering these like really goofy lines and I feel like this is like one one side of what Aquarius can look like, you know, is this sort of like spaced out, like conspiracy believing whatever. Um, and then in the next episode, we're going to get like strengths of Aquarius where Frenchie's going to fucking blow us all away. Like nothing that we've seen so far could prepare us for what Frenchie is about to deliver in the next episode. <laughs> yeah, I deeply deeply love the next episode um 
I have not yet ranked the episodes according to like the ones that I love the most, but I think the next one is like definitely up there for a lot, a lot of reasons. Yeah, no, same. It it might be it might be the best one. It's like every line in the next episode is quotable, you know. And when mm-hmm. that's true, it's hard to be like it's hard to argue that another one is is better, you know. Yeah. Um. I have Jim next, unless there's someone else you'd rather talk about. No, we talk about Jim. Okay, so I wrote Jim's gender reveal. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's great. I think we don't have anyone use they them pronouns yet in this episode for Jim, but like. Obviously, I love how casually their gender is just, like, introduced, you know? Like, we really just get them, you know, someone's like, you were a woman? And they're like, I don't know. And that's basically it. Like, that's the end of that conversation. And then we never have to revisit it. Um, I just think it's really great. Also, I, I love I love it for Jim. Yes. Just to be like, I'm just gonna keep being Jim. And everyone's like, cool, that sounds great. Yeah. Always always liked Jim. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Yeah, it is, yeah. It's so nice. I'm just like, okay, great. <laughs> yep. Um yeah, I desperately hope that more shows take a leaf out of this show's book when it comes to the character development of uh trans folks to just be like we can have four minutes total of screen time about it and then we can just keep on keep on keeping on yeah uh jim play that knife with frenchie to be like (laughs) i'm only gonna tell everyone this once scene this is just so funny it's so good um i do want to say though they're like i've been on the boat for weeks and we haven't crashed and i wrote but they literally have (laughs) they definitely ran aground and they've been attacked twice in the weeks that they've been on board which is obviously not jim's fault at all but like as a statement of fact, it is objectively false. Yeah, probably because everyone is aware that it is in fact Steed's fault. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would argue that running aground was uh, Buttons' fault. Yeah, yeah, as their navigator, senior navigator. Yeah, I mean, he was supposed to be steering, but he got distracted (laughs) by Pete's story. Hmm. Do you have anyone else? Um, I have a little bit about Steed. Okay. And then a little bit about Mary. So. Let's do it. um, All right. So we meet, we meet Mary. Um, We got glimpses of her before this episode, but we finally get sort of the flashback of what Steed's whole deal was. And it was, they were both in this shitty, in this like unhappy marriage. Um, And, you know, she was just trying fucking her best to this, to live the life that she was told is expected of her, you know, right? just as Steed was. And like, clearly she's also unhappy. Um. If her like gla- middle of the day glass of wine wasn't enough of a signal. Yeah. So. What I think is really noticeable about Steed when we get his marriage flashbacks is that like we see him wearing for the most part the like most somber colors that we get him in, um, minus his like thespian director slash dueling turtleneck. Right. <laughs> um, and it's I mean obviously like excellent visual work on the show but yeah like you know less less the excited peacock that we are used to and more of 
whatever sort of plain looking bird you want to enter. <laughs> yeah, this. I noticed that also. Yeah, I think it's like, it's really good work. And also, I super appreciate what it tells us about his character in that not only did he like have a custom ship built for him to sail away in, but also he got a like custom flamboyant pastel wardrobe made for him specifically to take on his boat and probably like left behind all of his like earth tone clothes. Yeah, he was like, oh, finally I can be in a in a society where it doesn't matter if I wear uh, the brightest tea all you have ever fucking <laughs> seen in your life. Yep. Oh, I love that for him, honestly. Um, yeah, I just wanted to note just how happy he is to have someone to talk to about his, like, love of fashion. Like, the way that he lights up when Ed is like, yeah, I think I might like a fine fabric, you know? And Steve's just like, great, I have been waiting for someone to show my secret wardrobe to this whole time. My crew doesn't care. They're all wearing fucking rope. Like, probably Lucius doesn't even care. And he's just like, he's just so ecstatic. <laughs> I love it. It's really cute. Um... And I mean, granted, if you have never felt cashmere and don't have a wool allergy, you definitely should because it'll it's just like the most softest, beautiful sweater slash scarf. I'm assuming that what Ed is holding is a scarf material. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> uh, my partner has a cashmere sweater. It's not an exquisite cashmere, it's a cheap cashmere. However, it is cashmere that um he wears like semi-frequently and every time he's put it on since we started watching the show <laughs> he'll like come up to me and like make me touch it. <laughs> like, it's a rather exquisite cat. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yes. uh yeah all of my thrifted cashmere sweaters are in my winter clothing but i cannot wait to do that once it is not winter <laughs> once it is winter here I can't oh. wait till it's time to put winter clothing away here. It's taken its time, man. Yeah, it's like weirdly hot here. Anyway. Um, oh, Steed. Um, I also, we also get, at, uh, we also get this, we also get a side of Steed that is basically 90s, like sitcom dad. Which up until this point you would have been like, but you treat the crew like you're like they're like they're your children. Like clearly you're would be a good, you know. And I mean I think probably for his kids, he's kind of like checked out, but like still seems to like at least want to do some stuff with them. But he's like the way that he's checked out of his marriage is very much like I don't know, not quite Ted Bundy, more like Homer Simpson, I think. Um, where he's just like. I got you this thing that I like. And it's like, I, I don't fucking want this ship, bro. <laughs> Do you, I told you yesterday I hate the ocean and you just completely, yeah. And I'm just like, oh, Steed, the side of you, <laughs> this yeah. come, this come dad side of you is a little bit surprising and also not great. <laughs> My dude. No, no. Um, yeah, so my only other steed thing that's here is this scene, which I have made like multiple memes about, about at this point, where Blackbeard is basically being like, you have to make a decision. Like, it's all, it's all on you, basically. Like, everyone's literal nightmare. Everyone's going to die, and it's going to be your fault. Um, and steed just, just screams, I don't know what to do. And... I feel like that moment is like the core of him as a person. Like that is what Steed Bonnet is about. It's just this feeling of like, I don't know what to do, <laughs> which is um, very tragic in this scene. But I think in general, a lot of why we find him charming is that he's just like, really trying and really stoked but literally has no idea what the fuck he's doing ever um this is sort of where it 
where we see it. Yeah. Also, I feel like a relatable feeling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, as someone who has oftentimes no idea what the fuck I'm doing. So. Welcome to Do You Fancy a Fine Fabric, where we talk about aesthetics. I'm really glad that we get to the episode where this line comes up. I don't know I why know. that pleases me. <laughs> um, I think I got to start off with, obviously, we get this in the last episode, but Edward Teach and his completely inappropriate for the tropical weather leather outfit. Mm-hmm. It is... It just looks so fucking good, even though I'm just like, this is so, but I'm just like, I don't know. And he has like his like, his like fancy pistol and like, I tried to get a screenshot of it, but I think on the one sleeve of his coat that is just the shoulder and the sleeve ends, there's some kind of, there's some kind of detail in the leather up there that looks kind of like flowers, but I really had a hard time figuring out what it was. Yeah, I couldn't really tell either, but it's some sort of like, yeah, like studded something or other. Yeah. I was thinking about his coat and obviously it's iconic. It's so like sexy. It's just like incredible, but it also is a lot like a lot of the things that we make fun of on our Buffy podcast that like when they're wearing like a halter sweater or like a sweatshirt, that's also like a belly shirt um where we're like what are you like dressed for two two different weathers like like a mullet of a shirt and it's basically like this is a mullet coat it's like one one of his arms is ready for summer and the other is ready for like a brisk fall day and it's so silly but it's so sexy that that doesn't matter at all you know I I think part of it is that as I'm sure IRL not super comfortable leather pants are. They just they, they just look fucking good. And like, I mean, Taika Waititi is a fucking attractive dude, but somehow the way that he is embodying Blackbeard is just like it like it just like oozes sexy. You know? Yes. Um It's great. And of course, there's obvious well. I had seen some chatter that Ed's look is inspired by the like OG Mad Max movie. Okay. Um, which I have not seen because I don't really want to look at what's his face's face. Um, Mel Gibson. Mel, Mel Gibson. So don't want to look at his face. I'm probably not going to see it. I'm sorry. But, the world is going to implode. That has literally never <laughs> happened in the history of us making podcasts together. <laughs> Um, let um, it be noted that every once in a while I have an answer to something. Um, <laughs> um, and so, but like, I don't like, don't, so yeah, I don't care that like it makes even less sense here than it does in a like post-apocalyptic movie that takes place in the desert. <laughs> uh-huh. um, it's great. Also, uh, for people who aren't aware, I have have a knee injury and have to wear a leg brace and I'm like can I find a leather leg brace would that be comfortable I don't know it seems impractical but I'm like it seems like it would be cooler mm-hmm. <laughs> it would look cooler than my my contraption of velcro and plastic so surely we could like you know gussy yours we Martha Stewart definitely has a tutorial on how to paint your Velcro knee brace to look like it's leather. <laughs> I could figure something out for sure. So. Um, yeah. Also the fact that his coat like is a, it showed like just every once in a while shows a little bit of tummy is like, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> he, he, yeah. And the fact that under his leather coat is basically a crop top is also just like, of all the places you'd want to be protecting with leather, I feel like your stomach seems like the appropriate place. You know very well that he loves being stabbed. (laughs) He sure does. Uh... (laughs) Oh, geez. Yeah, it's a ridiculous outfit, but it looks great. And it's, I, 
can't handle sometimes just how sexy it is. Yeah, for real. And his hair. His hair. The like half pony. Oh my God. It's just so good. And I looked it up today. It's a wig. I assume that they gave him extensions. I don't know why you wouldn't go extensions if that's an option. Because it would yeah. be more comfortable. The the uh the budget for the wig of it on his hair and like the beard like he doesn't he doesn't have a beard that long it's also fake but i'm like this is i'm not used to seeing this like high quality on like a television show where it's like oh you guys had a budget for this right (laughs) yeah i also in learning that his his beard which i also assumed was like beard extensions or something or he just fucking grew it out although that would take like two years um like he had the same issue as Jim. Like if he smiled, the glue would break and it would fall off, which means that like the unbelievable amount of like expression that he is delivering to us is happening with like the bottom half of his face having to be deeply controlled. Like Tyra Banks would be so impressed with his ability to smize because I was like, but he does smile like a lot, but he not it's not happening with his mouth for the most part. It's all it's all eyes. And that is just fucking incredible. It, work. it is like I, it is honestly like incredible acting. Cause like, right. Uh because until he shaves a beard, like all you see is like basically the top half of his face. And he's doing so much acting, like and like conveying so much depth and warmth or coldness depending on the situation with like just like right his eyes you know and like a little bit of his cheeks so Mm -hmm. it's like truly incredible yeah okay who's next or what i just oh uh i only have a couple of things in this section but uh so mary when the scene when they're exchanging gifts which i'm assuming is their anniversary i don't know it seems to be happening the same day uh mary's dress sort of reminds me of the dress in beauty and the beast when like bell and the beast are like dancing in the giant ballroom Mm -hmm. and i think it's like not just the color but a little bit of the cut too (laughs) that sounds right yeah so it's a nice dress it is a nice dress um we've actually kind of talked about the rest of my stuff here we get the do fancy a fine fabric line and the is this silk it's a rather exquisite cashmere and that's basically it i have one more thing okay which is frenchie's little green scarf that he was wearing in this episode yes he had it on last time it's still great um okay you do have something in Stark Revelations. I do. Welcome to Stark Revelations, where we talk about things that are fucked up. Uh, I just wanted to briefly touch upon Ed's br- like moment of like suicide ideation, where he's just like, everything's so fucking boring and it's all just very fucking just the same and I'm so over it. And it's like, oh, I haven't tried dying. Maybe that. And, and, it's, and it's just like, I'm sorry, what the fuck mm-hmm. are you talking about? And I'm like, oh no. And I mean, I don't know. I think it's just, Like it's clearly showing us just like where Ed is like mentally and it's not a good place despite all of his sort of like this sort of minor joy of like meeting the crew and they have a bird guy and like look at this like funny like funny little ship and like look at these like cool outfits that Steve has like he's still like just so deeply unhappy with his life despite being at the top of his game piracy wise Mm -hmm. so um and just sort of like, you know. Like he's, I don't know. Like, I mean, the, I mean, in this episode, like he's, and he's clearly been like, 
mentally ill for a while if Izzy's like I've been dealing with your increasingly erratic moods line is to be believed this is so it's sort of like I think it's like an important thing mm, let me take that back um it is a, a point to note about his character development and of course sort of um a thing to keep in mind when we see sort of like where his sort of highs and lows go and like where he takes that mm -hmm. is that like before him and steed started having adventures and like falling in love he was just ready to be like let's try this new thing even if it is being i don't know ran through by a, the spanish navy or whatever the fuck yeah you know? yeah i think that moment also makes a lot of sense to me in that he like something exciting is happening and he's like finding this rare moment of joy and Izzy is over here being a real fucking buzzkill and just being like stop having fun pay attention um and you know when you're in a really bad place mentally emotionally and you have that like something that like pulls you out of it to have someone just like immediately pull you back into the thing that's bumming you out is like yeah of course he like has what looks like an intense overreaction which I would argue is like not overreacting mm -hmm. um obviously not like threatening suicide is probably overreacting or like implying that um but like the level of like frustration and distress that he has as a result of what Izzy is doing I'm like yeah I would probably respond exactly the same way yeah 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 for sure all right welcome to the art of fuckery where we rant about stuff I would like to start with okay so we get our proper reveal of Blackbeard in this episode. Um, you know, that like, I love also, okay, I have so much to say. About <laughs> I love that he's smoking because it means that like, there is this like cloud of smoke as we're panning around. And like, that's the only information we've been given from Black P is like his head is made of smoke when he wants it to be. Mm. And then like, we get this reveal. And I feel like what we're doing with this show is something that's like a pretty widely used trope is like someone is like built up in the imaginations of the characters on the show. And then we get the reveal and the reveal is like nothing like what you expected. And usually it's mean I feel like usually it's like lol he's actually short or like he's actually bald or you know whatever. And here the gag is, he's actually so hot that your face is melting off. <laughs> and I think that that's so fucking funny. Like, I think it's like such a better joke than any other time I've seen this gag used. No, you're correct. It's, yeah, it, it is, yeah. Yeah, more people should have that reveal just be like, oh, wow, you are so much hotter than I thought you were going to be. <laughs> right. It's like you're supposed to be like this terrifying presence and instead you're just like so attractive. Like still having, you know, you're like still having a like jaw-dropping reaction, but it is in no way the jaw-dropping reaction that anyone expected to be having, you know? You're just <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Um, and I really appreciate that they like acknowledge that this is the gag that they've been doing when we have Lucius say, I thought he'd be taller. Yeah. It's so good. So good. It's really good. Um, all right. I have also one more thing before we get into the whole parallels between okay. Steed and Ed that we get. Which is, okay, so as someone also well-versed in the use of a trope, um, and we get actually a lot of things 
in this in this season where it's like set off the cuff and that comes out to be important later or like used in an interesting way is that I am very much team Lucius is hiding in a secret passageway of the ship for season two because you just can't be like oh yeah I've had a few secret passages put in and we see one which is his auxiliary closet and then we don't see any more and I'm like you don't don't fucking say that unless you're gonna reveal that's where Lucius has been hiding like eating fucking marmalade and being fucking angry about the shit (laughs) you know yes like and maybe they'll do something else with it but like again this show as we need to remind ourselves is a rom-com and I mean, even when you get to the like, you know, the truth is revealed kind of whatever. And then it's just like, oh, no, our two, the two people have like split up for whatever kind of internal or external drama. It's like, it's going to be a happy ending because that's the whole point of rom cups. Yeah, totally. Um, Which this show is 110%. It's a lot of other things too, but it is also a rom-com. So. Yeah. And like, if this show were to kill a gay character like the betrayal that that would be would be enormous so like yeah lucius is somewhere yeah no i there's no doubt in my mind that lucius is alive this show isn't game of thrones notorious for killing off almost every main character (laughs) out of the 30 (laughs) main characters all most of them are dead um, this is not the kind of show. I'm not watching Game of Thrones. I'm watching a rom com about gay pirates. So like yeah. Lucius, like they're not gonna kill Lucius. No. Is my feeling. Yeah. So. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Um, let's talk about our uh, Starcross lovers and their current marriages. <laughs> 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 I feel like I. I feel like I should start this off in that. I mean, obviously, clearly, Izzy is in love with Ed. Um, we're not, it's sort of like, I think still a bit of a question in my mind to like what level of affection, like obviously Ed has a lot of affection for Izzy um, and like love that I just isn't romantic. Yeah. Um, so, but for like, this show is setting up a, a very clear parallel, like Ed and Izzy are in an un- unhappy marriage, <laughs> just yeah. like, like just so starkly that in order for us to move forward, it's like, well, yeah, they're, they're like a married couple. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. No, uh, you're good. I, so I have them kind of separated. Um, like Steed and stuff about Steed and Mary's relationship. All right. Um, I feel like my notes are like all over the place. Um, but yeah, I think just like sort of in general, also the root of this is that it's every, everyone's having communication issues <laughs> and their respective relationships. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, do you want to start with Izzy and Ed or with Mary and Steed? I have Mary and Steed first. Okay. Um, and I think you brought up a lot of the stuff that I have here earlier, um, just in terms of like what a terrible husband Steed was. Um, it's very different from the Steed that we see here and like, you know circumstances dramatically affect how we treat the people in our lives but like he was a really bad husband he treated mary like shit emotionally yeah Uh, and it's and like i know that the internet has really ran with and misused the term gaslighting but he gets he gets a little a little a little smidge gaslighty when they're like in bed and he's just like oh no you didn't hear me crying what are you what are you talking about it's like steed she knows I, you're unhappy she's also unhappy like okay i thought about this too like it is technically gaslighting i think gaslighting implies like some level of intent i think that's just avoiding a situation like that's fair. you know 
it's gaslighting in the secret garden when Mary is like, I heard someone crying and Miss Medlock is like, that was the wind on the moors and like, you're imagining things and you have to stay locked in this room forever and stop exploring like that. She is like gaslighting Mary. Uh, this is just Steve being like, uh, no, it was probably, it was probably something else. Cause I definitely don't want to talk to you about the fact that I was crying. Um, I don't think there's anything like abusive about that, you know? That's fair. It's just, is deeply shitty. Yeah. It's but also yeah. okay to like not want to talk about things sometimes. That is true. I feel like the situation with her painting is like significantly more shitty than like avoiding that is, conversation. That is actually also deeply, deeply shitty. It's so terrible. He's so awful. <laughs> He's like, oh, the kids do. Um, also like when she's like, I did it. And he's like, oh, you can tell. <laughs> it's like the rudest thing. <laughs> and it's also just like so ridiculous because it is a fucking beautiful painting. It's and gorgeous. It's gorgeous. And like, we're not gonna focus on this, but the style of painting has like not even been invented yet at this time period. So it's like Mary is literally ahead of her time with this style. <laughs> and Steve is just like, oh yeah. It looks like a child draw. It's like, no, sir. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Unless it is a very talented child. <laughs> it's right. not what children's art looks like, my dude. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah, and it's just like, It's like Mary's just trying so hard to be like, could you please be in the same reality as me? And he's just, it's like, I think like even kind of beyond like head in the clouds, just sort of like, I just don't even want to be here. So I'm just going to be completely disconnected. You yeah. Know? Um, which sucks. <laughs> Definitely have had depressions like that. It's not great. <laughs> no. Um. It's not really, it's not an excuse though for being shady to your partner. No. It, it, it isn't. Like you can be depressed and be an asshole. And that is what Steve is doing. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, cause she's really trying. When she also like very like states that she also doesn't want to be there and doesn't want to be doing it. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's bad. I feel like the the part where you're like, oh shit, is the part where he has signed his like I've left letter with fond regards. What <laughs> an like, asshole. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like honestly, sincerely would have been less insulting than fond regards. <laughs> Uh, yeah I don't know I thought that I thought the letter was kind of shitty which is basically have fun being a single mom peace out it's like dude <laughs> yeah could you even legally do this at this time my dude did you put any thought in it besides being like I'm out so he left her a fuckload of money I don't know I mean I yeah like if she wants and, to hire a nanny she can so yeah. yeah I mean she was already rich before she got married and now she's even more rich with their combined wealth so like, right yeah um it, it isn't i mean that helps cushion the blow obviously um but yeah so yeah yeah and i think i also so i think it's also it's interesting where you know so both um maybe mary a little bit less so but i feel like both mary and izzy are both sort of like blindsided by their like partners sort of complete and utter disdain for the life that they have helped them build mm. you know yeah um and just like Like that, that still sucks, even if it's like, obviously like Steve and Ed are unhappy in the lives that they are in, 
but it's sort of just like you have other people to think about you know like Ed still has a crew and a whole other fucking ship, you know? He's just like, I'm just going to hang out here and eat marmalade with my new boyfriend, you know? And he's just I mean, in like, theory, where the fuck is his, his revenge, the Queen Anne's revenge? <laughs> Who the fuck knows? Who is piloting it if first mate Izzy Hands is, like, stomping around the revenge, being pissed about right. Steed? <laughs> you know? What an excellent question. Blackbird does not give a fuck. No. You know? Like he gives, he gives zero fucks because like he's just so excited for like the novelty of being able to potentially break loose of the like pirate social expectations. You know? Right. So. Yeah, that when Izzy is like, you know, I've I've been dealing with your increasingly erratic moods and like trying to keep the crew together and whatever and Ed's just like oh that sounds stressful Izzy like so condescendingly you're just like oh my god sir that was so rude holy shit honestly Izzy's uh restraint from just not hitting Ed in the face there and just giving him two middle fingers is like yeah I don't know yeah 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 it's like izzy you need to find a new boyfriend i'm sorry <laughs> yeah totally. there's plenty of eligible bachelors in this crew you can just <laughs> take your pick my dude yeah yeah uh, so yeah and it's just like i think all right I think what I also like about this episode is sort of like, obviously the very strong parallels of like Ed and Steed, but also just sort of like the fact that, what they both desire is like sort of seen via like both of their partners and probably the world at large as being very strange. And I'm like, oh, you guys have queer desires, do you? <laughs> You want to de- you want to defy expectations and imagine a new way of a new way of living, including potentially changing the way that you look. And I'm like, gay. It's gay. Yeah. It's all gay. <laughs> They're trying on these literally new identities within two hours of him meeting. It's like, take off your clothes. We're swapping. Let me try being a like fancy, pretty soft boy for a minute. And I'm just like, gay. Yeah. Like, is this both of you guys' ring of keys moment? Because I feel like maybe, at least for Steve, <laughs> it probably yeah. is. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah. Yeah. Do you want to use that to slide into the sexy section, or do you have other stuff here? Yeah. Yes, which? Uh, yeah, no, we can do that. Okay. Welcome to And They Were Co-Captains, where we talk about sexy stuff. Um, Yeah, because I just want to say, like, do you want to do something weird is like... That that was a come on. (laughs) Peak peak flirting. Like, that is really great. Um, I know people, well, I mean, like, obviously I have no point of reference, but like a lot of people make fun of the way that the flirting happens on this show like the stabbing scene, the do you want to do something weird line, the like, I'd come to your restaurant thing. And I'm like, isn't that just what flirting looks like? But again, I if that's what weird gay flirting looks like, that's, I guess, the only kind I've ever done. So like, maybe I don't <laughs> know what flirting looks like, but I feel like that's just normal flirting. Is it not? Yeah, it's like theater gay flirting, which is essentially what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Maybe part of it is that people are so used to conventional rom-coms. And I mean like conventional, even if there are queer people looking at you, whatever the fuck that terrible holiday movie is. Hap- no, whatever the fuck. Um, uh, and so when you just have like weird dramatic queers like flirting with each other, it's just mm-hmm. is like, I don't understand what's happening. It's like, Ed was like immediately after meeting stays, like take off your clothes and yeah. put mine on. Yeah. You look great in this leather. And I'm just like, 
Yeah. <sighs> and I think, I mean, maybe it's because like I've only ever like dated people I was friends with. And I guess like flirting looks a little bit different when you like actually know each other than like in most movies and TV shows where people start dating before they actually know who the other person is. So flirting yeah. is like like awkward moments in like hallways or bars or like the office water cooler or whatever the fuck. Um and like glances and stuff. But like when you're flirting with your friends, it is having these like very silly conversations that like are fueled by the kind of adrenaline that happens when you have butterflies that like you never get to have again after like, the flirting period. <laughs> but yeah. I, it just feels very genuine to me. Yeah. I also feel like, and not that I've done this because I have a rule with, I had, I had a rule with myself when I was single to only try to pursue people who were at least mostly kind of out to themselves, where I feel like if you in the situation where it's like, I want to flirt with you, but I'm not totally sure if you're gay, then of course it's going to look different. Like, just fucking run me through with this sword <laughs> or do you want to do something weird you know yeah yeah <laughs> um yeah it's just it's just just so funny just how like instantly enamored ed is with steve and oh like i mean vice versa don't get me wrong but we start this episode off with Steve is like bleed, like his like bandage is bleeding. He's like in a full fever dream. And Ed has been at his bedside, like watching him for like who knows how long. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um on top of like saving him from being murdered by the Spanish Navy. <laughs> right. It's just like you're you're just you're just so deeply into this and of course steed is like a new friend slash crush do you want to see my secret closet <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i love when he's just like he ed is just like psychically communing with steed who is unconscious he's just like staring at him just trying to like you know i think i sent you <laughs> <laughs> like tweet or something that was like dear reddit i'm trying to figure out if this unconscious dying man i found is gay <laughs> like, based on his like fever like coma what words are fever mutterings whatever um you know because he's like talking back to him he's like who is this mary like what does she mean to you <laughs> yeah deeply he's like so mary fuck is mary <sighs> Um, oh my God. yeah the um the way that so you know they've come out and ed like introduces steed and then he's like greet your fucking captain and then everyone's doing that and izzy pulls him away and is yelling at him and like ed does not stop staring at we can only assume steed's ass the entire time as he is yelling <laughs> he yeah. cannot take his eyes away yeah he is only half paying attention to izzy uh because he's just like uh-huh yeah but like have you seen him in those other pants though izzy are, are yeah. you looking izzy I, I need you to really focus on this <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh and Izzy's like, I don't want to fucking die <laughs> because you have a fucking crush. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Do you have anything else here? Uh, I do not. All right. Welcome to The Crystals Attract Demons, where we talk about science and history and stuff. Uh, I actually have a few more things here than I have had in the past few episodes. Okay. Um, do you want me to start? Yeah, go for it. Okay, so first off, um, we have the line from Wee John. No, we have the line from Roach where he's like, uh, I have like an uncle named Margaret. And Wee John is like, oh, that's kind of like one of those either or names, you know, but like Jim. And I looked it up 
Um, <laughs> Margaret has been historically a woman's name. Okay. Uh, since the fourth century. Um, uh, probably derived from a like Greek word, word uh, a Greek word that means pearl. But in the fourth century, there's also a saint, a Saint Margaret, who was the patron saint of expectant mothers, and who was frequently painted um, in the Middle Ages as with the dragon that she has allegedly escaped from at some point in her adventures. Interesting. Yeah, so Saint Margaret, pretty rad. Uh, there probably are some dudes named or some people named Margaret who are not women, because that's just statistically likely. Statistically likely, but I like. I feel like when he said that, I'm like, I have to Google this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and yes, obviously, any name could be any gender. But yeah, that little line was the reason to look it up. Nice. Um, I'm glad that you did that because I've wondered about it every single time, and I've never. Looked it up, so. <laughs> I was like, I know I'm not doing any pirate research, but at least let me look up about the name Margaret. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, I want to talk about weather phenomena. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, Ed is like, yeah, I knew it was going to do this fog thing for these reasons. Mm -hmm. Um, the color of the morning sky, um, the shape of the clouds, the fact that there was a wind. So, um, I don't I feel like a lot of us grew up hearing the the saying, red sky at night, sailors delight, red sky in morning, sailors take warning. Mm -hmm. um, it is real. And the reason is that a red sky appears when dust and small particles are trapped in the atmosphere by high pressure and it scatters blue light, leaving only the red behind. And a red sky at sunset means that high pressure is moving in from the west. So the next day will probably be dry and pleasant. Um, but in the morning, uh, it's because high pressure weather system um, has already moved east. So the good weather has passed and probably it will be wet and windy and a low pressure system. Interesting. That's yeah. so cool. I know. And apparently like these little rhymey sayings exist like the world over like every culture, every language has some sort of thing that's like easy to remember um, that gets passed on uh, because, you know, pre any sort of weather prediction, this is like the best thing that you had to know what kind of day you were going to have. Right. Especially if you're like a fucking sailor when you're just like, I mean, I've never been at sea, um, Kind of afraid of big boats but i am aware that uh big storms in the ocean sound fucking horrifying yeah so yeah we definitely see ready to batten down the hatches whatever the fuck that means <laughs> so. okay i thought the fucking alarm was going off but it's not uh yeah that's so cool it never occurred to me that like every society that's near the water would have or like that would have something like that that's so cool i don't think it's even like water based because apparently in some areas it the saying is about shepherds and not sailors so because mm. it's like really if you're like doing outdoor tasks knowing yeah. what the weather is going to be that day is important so i think it's just kind of everywhere that's so cool. Yeah. It's always nice to be reminded that the there could there is a lot of accuracy in the oral tradition, which I think uh Western society sort of wants to pretend that that is not true. That's very true. Yes. So the linchpin on which Ed's initial plan fails is that it's not going to be bright enough cuz it's the day before the full moon. But even if the moon is not full, it's like mostly full and it is very bright. So that is not actually the problem. Really? Yes. It's the tide. Oh, you're right. Yes. I was like, it's a light thing. Duh, it's a tide thing. Yeah. Um, and that's a real thing. Full moon tides. They're called spring tides and they're like much more 
intense or whatever than um than other tides so I would assume that the like you know two wolf moons on either side of the full would probably also have a very strong tide but whatever um and this is the kind of thing that I fucking love about this show is like the color of the morning sky accurate the effect the full moon has on the tide accurate was 1717 a leap year absolutely not (laughs) i actually (laughs) meant to look that up but i like couldn't quite remember the year i just think that's like this is (laughs) the perfect encapsulation of what i think is so great about what this show's priorities are it's yeah they're like whatever it's good for the joke just put it in there I mean, it is, it is a really good joke. It is a great joke. We're going to be like, oh, bro, it's a leap year. Also, like, that means that Ed has been one day off since February. <laughs> <laughs> it, like, doesn't even matter because Izzy's on the correct calendar. He's not one day behind, ahead. So, like, it basically evens itself out. Except guess, for this yeah. precise moment. Yeah. <sighs> <sighs> Do you have more stuff here? Yes, I have one more thing, which is we get a I, I talk, we get a lot of we get a lot of lighthouse symbolism in this episode um, with the story, and we kind of keep rolling with it. The show, I mean, next episode, no, is this episode the fuckery one or is it the one after that? The one after. All right, this episode we get kind of like steed associated with a sort of lighthouse symbolism and then a couple episodes from now we'll get ed as like the kraken which i will talk about once we get to the the art of fuckery episode um but like just like in this show in real life i mean the symbol of the lighthouse is to sort of like a light in the darkness kind of like safety guiding light but also maybe not quite paradoxical, also an alert about danger because the the places you want to put lighthouses are where the rocks and the ocean are just fucking dangerous as shit. Right. (laughs) So you want a lighthouse there so the ships don't fucking run into the rocks or whatever geographical things could like, you know, fuck up your shit. Right. Um, And like, you know, and we kind of, and you know, Ed says in this episode that like, you know, you're supposed to fucking avoid like houses. So he's like even bringing up the sort of inherent danger of like what people consider this like kind of like safety, like safe guiding force. And which is great because I think that at least in this episode, we have this sort of, we sort of end on sort of like Ed and Steve being each other's lighthouses in a way that like steed could not be for mary Mm. um but there's also like in any relationship where you are being vulnerable there's also a little bit of danger that you could become emotionally cracked on the rocks right Um, which is i mean as we see the end of this season what happens to my dear sweet ed Mm -hmm. (laughs) um so yeah, this show is real good at symbolism, you guys. I just wanted to, I just wanted to, to point that out. I also feel like a little bit, I don't know. It also feels a little bit like, you know what also? The lighthouse sort of feels a little bit like the tower, which is a tarot card. Mm. Where I'm like, it's a lot, of, uh, a lot of change, a lot of abrupt change. And I feel like that also kind of applies to Steed, I would say, which we will awfully get into at once we finish the season right but, i mean yeah uh, <sighs> all right that was your last thing here that was my last thing here cool welcome to petrified orange where we talk about our new favorite things i believe it's your week to go first um, so at the so at the start of this episode, we see Ed smoking uh, just a normal what I think is a corn cob pipe pipe as opposed to his long ass Gandalf pipe, um, which let me which leads me to believe that his Gandalf pipe is for weed. Did I say this last episode? <laughs> no, you didn't. Yeah. 
Uh, so yeah, Ed has a nowhere tobacco pipe and then also a ridiculous pipe for his weed. Canon accepted. Mm-hmm. Um, my first thing this week is the Swedes line delivery when he says, it makes sense. I always liked Jim. That's <laughs> 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 wonderful. Uh, um, oh man, now I should, should I send my, my thing I have written down or the other great line from this week, this episode? You can do three. So. All right. Uh, when when the Swede is like, I was not expecting that. <laughs> like it was a like particularly juicy plot twist. <laughs> uh, uh, hang on a second. Can you be quiet for like three more minutes? You can do it, bud. Shh. All right, my second one this week is the. It's so hard to describe the like just extremely self-confident like sort of pirouette up onto the table that Ed does when he's explaining how he knew that the fog was going to come in. <laughs> it, it's like at that point you're like theater gay. Like yeah. that was just you were just waiting for the opening for you to show off your fabulous calves and these stockings yep. to be like... It, it was I really deduced the answer it's like I love it I fucking love it I'm gonna make a gif of it and put it with the the when I put all the photos of the things we talk about in the episode on the website so if anyone doesn't remember you'll be able to watch it there all right what's your bonus favorite just that Frenchie is definitely a flat earther <laughs> <laughs> Uh, big Aquarius energy. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, All right. Thank you all so much for listening to this episode of the Gay Pirate Podcast. Uh, You can, wait, what do I say? I don't have to say all the stuff at the end. Yeah. Uh, If you haven't already, um, if you listen to this, if you listen to this as a podcast, we actually have YouTube videos up so you can look at our faces <laughs> while we talk about these things. And if you're watching us on YouTube, you should definitely like and subscribe um, so more people can experience how cute we are. Yeah, do it. <laughs> and until next time. Farewell, Bonnet's Playthings. <laughs>